Yes. Yes. De -de 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 -de. Sorry, so it was a good live event now. Not very clever. How are we doing guys? Are we alright? Good to see you. Good to see you. <sighs> Feels like the world is spinning faster. So much information flying in. Uh the world, the pace of it, the pace of stories, how they develop. Uh been so interesting. It's moved up a, a gear or two in terms of Oldham, in terms of grooming in the consciousness and the psyche, I feel. Uh, I don't, like I've said before, I don't really look at the press too much, but I feel a bit of momentum on the general question is becoming more of a untaboo subject, and that's great. One, for survivors' accountability, and two, to just let's have it right. So that's why we've got new with this campaign. Is uh, I'm about to speak to one tonight, Billy Howarth from PAG UK. Um, I can't wait to speak to find out what PAG's been up to. Also, we can speak about what's going on in Oldham as well, so Billy can give us his spin on it. But thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. It won't be a long stream. Um, hopefully, there'll be a bigger stream to come at the weekend with more guests. So, uh, Without further ado, let's get the man in. How are we doing, Billy? How do, guys? How do, Phil? Mate, how are you doing? Everything all right? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Busy as always, but good. Um, moving along. You had a, an interview on uh, GB News, I do believe, didn't you, recently? Yeah, I've had a couple, Phil. I've had a couple, mate. I've had a couple on the... the a couple with Patrick Christie. Yeah. And then a couple, one with uh, Ruth um, Mikosa. Excellent. I hope I said her name right now. <laughs> you know what it's like, mate. There's every chance you didn't, but all, all fair play to you, mate. So how did it go down? Was it all right? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I got my point across. Yeah. Um, I thought me and Patrick always have a good interview. Um, I thought I frightened the other two a little bit, being a straight talking northerner, so to speak. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, yeah, Dropping right. names and that, but you know, Phil, that's something I've always done. If I know, then I'm going to tell you. I mean, the one thing you're not, uh, can definitely not be accused of, is making this a taboo. You're not afraid of, because of accountability, you've got to. You're not afraid of exposing, you're not afraid of going right in. No. Uh, and exposing individuals as well as the problem. Now, that is a sore subject. That is uncomfortable for some. And yeah. it also starts a paradigmal fight, which no one understands. But the truth, in order to get true accountability, accountability haven't you got to do that? Haven't we got to mm. really, truly expose who's to blame for all this? Mm. When you've got a, uh, say you've got a bike there, Phil, and one of the nuts are rusty and it's got, and the bike's giving you problems, then you remove the rusty nut, don't you? Right, and then you put a new nut in there and the bike runs better. Well, you know Billy, what I'm with what we're hearing, all the different failings in all the different areas, that should denote that there's a bigger problem that possibly is on a national level. So to well, ask for an inquiry is only kind of common sense, really. Of course. Now, let, let's be honest, Phil. Me and you've been in this game for a while now, yeah? We've been all over the show. We've been to Telford. We've been Cumbria. We've been everywhere, Phil. And, and the fact remains is it's all the same. And it's the same attitudes once it's been highlighted is we've done everything we can. There's no grooming here, as they said in Cumbria. And then we see... You know, Umberside having to come in and arrest the same men that have been accused in Cumbria and charge them with offences. Do you know what I mean? So it's all gone a bit, you know, it's like, what's going on? What's going on? Why can't it, it, it... In the eyes of Cumbria police, these men stopped misbehaving in 2010. So anyone who said true. anything after 2010 is telling porkies. Do you know what I mean? No I, but... Like you say, mate, it is the same. It's like the same template from either the police or the councils in all the different areas, whether it be Rochdale. I haven't covered Rotherham, but I have covered Salford. 
Uh, yeah. I have covered Rock, um, Oldham uh, and Hull as well. And it's the same story throughout it all. They're all hiding behind elements that do know, and it's well documented. Uh, I've been receiving letters now that, uh, in some cases, are leaked letters that are confirming that people did know, and it was nearly a decade ago, particularly in Oldham, that council yeah. leaders and council executives did know, and they tried to suppress it from the BBC and probably from the greater Oldham yeah. and the world. I promise you now, Phil, right, I don't need to speak to any girls from Oldham. I know they knew. Do you know how I know, Phil? Because I've been telling them for the last 10 years these places in Oldham that I've been highlighting, you know I've worked in Oldham, Phil, because I've, I've told you about it before, I'm sure, yeah. of certain places in Oldham that I've reported over and over and over again and nothing's ever been done. Now these places are being named as the places where these things are taking place. So they knew because I know what they knew. I told them, I told Greater Manchester Police, I told the, the CSE team in Oldham, but you know what? A similar saying is going to ring out here. And I think we were talking about Linda just before we come on. I'm sure it was Linda, in my view, kind of coined yeah. it. They all knew. Remember when that was <laughs> touted about yeah. with the Cyril Smith and, you know, the same yeah. thing. You know, no one really wanted to be accountable for it, but there was only accountable for what actually spilled out and become yeah. an open secret to everyone. There's dirtier stuff still to go with Cyril, with no view and everything else. So she, I remember yeah. her saying to me, God rest her soul, they all knew. And we, we know that. It's the same in it. We all knew I'm about gonna... Cyril. We all knew about Cyril. Everybody knew exact words that what that councillor Sarah Botham said. They all knew. Everybody knew. We, we, uh, we spoke about Cyril and everybody knew. She knew about Cyril, everybody knew. Do you know what I mean? So, as the as the guy in the recording said, uh, mate, Dan, what do you mean they knew they were complicit in the abuse of children? If they knew and they didn't do anything to stop it, then they are become complicit in the abuse of children. And well, I'll always stick to that. Right. It is right. And that's right yeah. for every uh, MP, every councillor now, that knows more than what they're letting on. Because not only are you letting down people historically, the CSC, but every person in the future. Because if we can actually analyse this, and this won't be comfortable viewing, that's another thing about this, to try and do a overall national review and totally speak about this and break down the numbers and break down the nationality and break down the cultural ideology that is behind this it's going to be so uncomfortable that that is the reason why everyone's getting cold what the cold and being suppressed and all that but if we don't come to that conclusion billy we're never yes. going to save the survivors properly. whenever whenever you go to anything like the gmca or let's be honest with it and i'm not politically getting trying to align people away from any party or such you know what i mean but let's be let's be blunt and let's be honest Many of these towns that we've named are under Labour leadership. It, it's got, it's got to be said. Rochdale, Oldham, Telford, there was all under at the time of these scandals. Be fair, Billy. This is what we're saying. This is what the inquiry should contain. It should dissect and gain all the correlations. If there's a correlation that is now, everyone can pretty much say it without getting slapped. Pakistani stroke Bangladesh, not predominantly, but mainly, you know what I yeah. mean? At the same time, you should be able to say, well, listen, the bottom line is what councils are to do with that. And yeah. shouldn't, if there's a correlation between one uh, kind of uh, council, one individual, one party, then that should be brought out in the wash and that should be brought into the consciousness of everyone. Because you know, we did We did it with the church. With yeah. It's, you know what, I mean? dude, what what we now know is that we need transparency. 
we're seeing abuse, we're seeing trafficking, we're seeing grooming. We're, no one wants to sit by this stuff, but you can't ignore that it's there either. And we're talking international trafficking with Ghislaine Maxwell and everything else. So everyone's got that in the consciousness. But throughout it all, mate, as you'll agree, accountability, where is that? Exposing yeah. people, where is that? You know, and it's, if we don't get to this, we're not going to be able to truly have them guidelines. So when we're talking about safeguarding, what are you really... Yeah. The, the proverbial line, isn't it? Safeguarding has changed since 2012 for the better. And what happened then wouldn't happen today in today's safeguarding. But it did. And it has. And it will continue to do so till we get to the root cause of it and ignoring it and pretending it didn't happen and ignoring survivors who are coming forward, like Sophie, like the Rochdale Free Girls and the other 46. You know, um, many of them came forward. Now, at the first meeting in Oldenville, I heard Andy Burnham make a remark, and I'm going to hold him to it because it's the first I've heard about it. And I thought being in the circles I am, I'd have been someone that have told me, oh, I've been called in by, so blah, blah, blah. So he said there's a review due to be released for Rochdale. Like the one that was released two, uh, three, four weeks ago in Oldham. Now, I know for a fact, Today, I've double-checked and I've messaged people. Um, it's been confirmed. None of them have been spoken to by this inquiry, by this review. So I, I, I'm predicting now they're going to do what they did in Oldham here in Rochdale and said there was no cover-up. Now, we know nationally, because in Nazir Assal, there was a cover-up. He told us Maggie Oliver, the investig senior, most senior investigative officer on the case, has told us there was a cover-up. But I bet Andy Burnham's GMCA, which just uh, coincidentally approaches of all Labour members from all the towns that are all Labour, his leadership. If you look at GMCA leaders, they're all Oldham councillors, uh, not MPs, just the councillors who's the leader of each council. Yeah. And they're all, they're all Labour, you know? So. We've got to know. We've got to know the correlation with this and why. Yeah. That's the bigger question. And these parties have got to be held to account. And all of them, even if we're going to break down, there's still complicit behaviour in questions. And we've heard so much, even over these past couple of meetings, mate. Um, Warren Bates was telling us how they tend to want to vote and how they're kind of groomed to vote a certain way because carrots are dangled. You know, it, it must be an intimidating climate. If you want to see yourself in that same position six months down the line, there's people above you that might govern the way you think in order to make sure you're in place for that. Now, that is wrong. You know what I mean? It's political bullying, you could argue. And then where's the democracy with all that? But we clearly heard that goes on in Oldham. So if it goes on in Oldham, it must be going on everywhere, pal. Well, a little quick story there for what's just... I found out about a week ago of this off a mutual friend of ours. And when we're next together, I'll get her to tell you the same story I'm going to tell you now. Her daughter's in school, um, college, I think it is, and they're having a discussion about... It, I think it's a social study lesson. And they're having a discussion about the far right. So this young girl makes a, makes a stand like, and she's saying, well... If we're going to learn about the far right, aren't we going to learn about the far left? And the teacher replied, there's no such thing as the far left. You are what? <laughs> Antifa. So it, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So that just kind of rounds off what you've just said, you know. <laughs> See, with this lack of intelligence, they haven't got a chance, the kids. If you've got guys that are projecting that out to kids that probably won't question it any further. And you're not engaging them into the tr true spectrum of what's going on. But if you're not going to engage them in that, then they're only ever going to come out with one view. There's only one thing, and that's far-right Nazis. And then mm -hmm. that can be labelled to anyone that they determine. So, like you say, Billy, the likes of you and I, I've been. That, it's just, you know, that's what they did with lads in Telford who was talking about this 12 years ago. Lads in Rochdale that was talking about this 12 years ago. Myself, who's been talking about this all over for the last 12 years, uh, has been called far right and extreme and whatnot, you know. Um, 
anyone who comes and speaks to me next have to speak to prevent. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? <laughs> and so say, like, behave yourselves. Honestly, it's happened for where people have rang me up and said, I've yeah. been shouting in by prevent. I'm like, what? Prevent well, domestic by terrorism. Day, mate, mate, that is far left activity. Yeah. In order for them to, you know, save the planet, save the country, I understand it. I understand with terrorism, even though that is manipulated and exploited to gain from it, never let a good crisis go to waste. So it's hard to trust anything that they do, but I'm not a conspiracy theorist. But with this, mate, you have got to keep your eye on the ball because we know what they're capable of. We know that they're capable yeah. of psychological warfare. And probably yes. this is the biggest... When the, the establishment uh, look at this. I always look at that. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? When yeah. they say, look at this news here, I always say, well, well I want to look at the news behind the news. Let's have a look at what's behind the news, because the news is telling us. We heard the past 24 hours, I got a link from Debbie. And hi to Debbie, and good luck to Debbie. She's actually on uh, GB News at 8 o'clock, so probably now. Well done to her, and if I can try and edit that and put it on my channel, I will. But yeah. she sent me just a quick, link. Phil, before you carry on. I'm sorry, I've got yeah. to say it. She's Linda Phillips 2.0, that lady. I tell you, I they think the world of her, she's awesome, mate. Awesome, I think she's brilliant. Displaying the same characteristics in terms of fight and endeavor, and you know, mm. let's face it, the boat. Sadly, Linda's no longer with us, but they were both in the same position. Linda always come round with the files in her hand of something that had happened to her. Debbie has clearly got a past as well, but they both come together on the initial point, mate, is yeah. that abuse to the kids in their area, their borough, was ultimately, ultimately wrong, and they were both articulate enough, strong enough, and, mate... Make me laugh. Linda used to make me laugh. Debbie makes me laugh. What a force that have been together. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> because they wow. would have really got on, let's face it, let's say that, mate. Linda would have really loved Debbie and they would have both yeah. clicked and both stood Let's side by side. Because let's face it, there's both, although Linda supported the broader abuse, her her fight, her campaigning was what had happened to her son, Craig. You know, no yeah. youth school. And that yeah. was the justice that she wanted all along. And, you know, literally, Cyril Smith here and what they were all doing and the complicit behaviour. Like we were saying at the beginning, mate, it mirrors everything that is going on now with the way the councils act, with the way the police act, and with this pyramidal... Uh, py pyramid kind of thing going on, this compartmentalisation that clearly is going on between social services, um, political parties as well as the police, as well as maybe the judiciary, who knows? But it's certainly but, proven on the first phrase. They're all run by the same people, though, aren't they? So if we look now, the police are run by a police commissioner who's a Labour politician who selects who the GMCA leaders are. Who, who then make the decisions on which councils to all responsible, but their leaders of said councils. It's all set up. It's cronyistic. It's cronyism at the finest cronyism. We could argue that with the way the world is going and gone and the way it's been run, mate, it's the same thing, isn't it? It's the yeah. bigger questions that probably the little guy is not supposed to understand, not supposed to talk about it, I'm um, just pretty much let things lie as they are. So when they're yeah. saying they do something, they're doing it and they're doing it well. And they can never, ever be wrong. But ultimately, we've got people now, because of the internet and everything else, like you and I, mate, we get interested, we get communicating with other people around the world. And that is highlighted situations. And pretty much mm -hmm. this, mate, I mean, you've been campaigning with PAG for Bleeding hell, far longer than me. You've done. You've walked the walk far more than me, mate. You've done patrols. You've done all types of this. So it's like, you know, this is it. This is the fight. You know, commend you for it. 
I said to Maggie Oliver the other day in a tweet, she tweeted, she was, um, she was heartbroken that it's just going on and on and on and on. And I said, do you know what, Maggie? I said, when I first started this, it was in the hope, even if, if it was just a little bit, just that little bit, dilute the numbers. But, the, you know, the sad truth of the tale, Phil, is the numbers are more high today than they've ever been. Yeah. And that's why I'm, I'm devastated by it. You know, each knock is each case that gets no further action is a knock. But there's more and more. Ninety percent of cases are getting no further action because the child or then the young person they've become is words not enough. The words not enough. Them sitting there and disclosing their abuse isn't enough as evidence, as far as evidence goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a threshold it's to be met, so. and that's what Hull apparently have gone through. The yeah, CPS I want to. I want to meet this. That... I really want to meet this guy from old. Yeah, you had on your show. I yeah, really want to. I'd love you. To, I'd love to bring you together. I mean, that that's the whole point of doing this now, Billy. To yeah. be fair, I, I'm covering it from different angles. I can't cover every area, but um, it means so much more doing that. But yourself, um, obviously, Ian uh, Piper. That is. Um, yeah, Ian Piper. You know, uh, Debbie. Because you're all representative of a certain area. So you, together, yeah. are that powerful force. You were talking about uh, Linda and Debbie, you know, them side by side. Imagine you guys just being on a stream, being in the background on a chat, away from me, away from all this. It's yeah. not about me. I'm just happy to put you all together because this is a bigger question and we're all kind of stronger together, working together. Not but you working know, smart as well, mate. Because like you say, this is it's long. You don't get that accountability like that. Things seem no. to be changing for Oldham, I feel. Uh, since I've got involved, it feels the cog may have turned a little bit more in terms of the overall consciousness. Because I was thinking this before, because I made a point to Debbie about you know, this ain't gone national enough on an earlier stream, and she corrected me, and I was probably wrong to say it, and she said it is has gone national, but what I really meant to say is that, like Rochdale, like Rotherham, they're probably the main two that most people who are not affected by this and live their lives will be able to recite when talking about grooming. A yeah. lot of people still probably won't know about Tel Tel Telford, uh, a lot of people will definitely not know about Hull and maybe more about Oldham, but same again. I think the sooner the whole psyche is out there, so when someone who is not even relative to following abuse just does whatever, that they can go run off all these different areas, that builds how serious this is, Billy. Yeah. Because this ain't just one individual. Oh, like, let's build up Rochdale for a bit. Let's pull back. Oh, well, let's build Rotherham up for a bit and pull back. Or oh, let's build Telford up for a bit. No, can we put them all together and make you now see that this is a broader picture that, that is still going on now? Because they have got... Sorry, I'm going to let you speak here, mate. They have got the audacity, these guys, to make the public believe that this is no longer going on. We've learnt lessons and we're doing, we've done it. We've done it. We've cracked it. The question needs to be asked about learning lessons, Phil, really, because just I'm going to use Robram as an example. In the, uh, in the Daily Mail, I read, and I, obviously it's in the Daily Mail, so I don't know if it's 100% accurate, but it, it, I know there was a review because I was this was what I was on GB News about Robram. Um, they told me as well that in the, in the review of Robram, there was eight senior police officers found with doing something that was misconduct in the investigation into child sexual exploitation. Eight officers. The most severe punishment for them eight officers was one written warning. And therein lies the problem, Phil. Until we start holding these people to real account, it doesn't mean, yeah, we'll have a meeting with them, we'll tell them, that's wrong, don't do it again. No, what we need to start doing is convicting these people for malfeasance and nonfeasance. Now, I've, that's not a word I ever grew up knowing. I only know that word through one person and one person only. Really, I always window. believe that with this criteria, sadly, with this criteria, you talk about people that have been affected. Never mind the why the public and how they feel about it. Yeah. But how people have been affected. So 
are they, they've got to look people in the eye. And when they fail people and they're not complicit or they're being complicit, then they've got to look them in the eye and go, you know what, that survivor over there, I've got to explain to her why we're not we're not getting the justice that she yeah. deserves, why things are in place, why we let her down, why now this young lady can't really function in the way that she should be more organically because she's been violated in such a way it's affected her body and her mind and her soul. Sorry to yeah. go on about it, but well, that's well, the severity of this. It's, you know, why would a social worker let a child leave its court, leave the company if they knew there was going away to be abused? Do you know what I'm saying, Phil? If I was a social worker and I had a child in my care and I knew if she left me, the percentage of her being abused was really high. She wouldn't be leaving me. She'd be... I, I'd have to do... I, know, I don't know the process, Phil, that I've been in care myself. It's just you get taken to a kid's home and left there. I don't even know if I could do that. Do you know what I'm saying? Leave them at a kid's home. Because of my own experiences, no, I don't think I could do that. Yeah. But, you know... It, it, something's got to be, so, so you've got to say, well, what's the process when a social worker gets told by a child that's been abused? Do, do they go on the computer and send an email? Or do they actually pick the phone up and ring somebody up and say, listen, this kid's in danger, this is urgent? Not an email that I'll get read tomorrow morning. Because that's, that's the culture I'm seeing. And pa passing it to another department because it doesn't affect them. It's not part of their three job. Days past. That's three days past. Do you know what I'm saying, Phil? And that's the problem. It needs to be pick up the phone, ring, and go straight away. That's the only way we safe guy going. But the, the same attitude, the same culture of, right, okay, send an email. We have to do it. We have to send an email to this spider network. Boom, boom, boom. Right, okay, someone in Oldham will pick that up. Someone in Greater Manchester will pick that up. Someone at headquarters will pick that up. Monday morning. It's a Sunday, Saturday night. Someone will pick that up Monday morning when they come in. Can't be Therein lies part of the problem. It's three days before anything's done, and that for some, for many children, many young girls or boys, that three days could be life destroying. Right, Billy. Great to see you. I want you to. Sorry, we just kind of come rushing straight in here. People may not uh, have seen you on here for a while, but this is Billy from Pag UK Parents Against Grooming. Billy, could you explain to people what is it you do? with Parents Against Grooming. Certainly, so. people know you, you're Rochdale based, but now's the time to throw all your information out there, mate. Yes, guys. So what, I'm looking, what I looked at doing many years ago was opening a network for survivors to encourage recovery. Um, so we did just that. We started with peer-to-peer -peer groups, female and male peers. In fact, I started with a male peer-to-peer -peer group. Then we've initiated the female peer-to-peer -peer group. We then all the volunteers that I had available, we went on a course through Acorn Academy. and We're all now qualified level two counsellors, including myself. Um, so we're now able to do one-to-one -one peer mentoring and counselling. So that's on the go. I've also now, as of late, I've... Um, we have kind of split into a few departments. Uh, so we have, uh, obviously, we have Parent Patrol, which is always and still quite active. Um, not as active as it used to be, I'll be honest. Um, boots on the ground are not easy to find. But more act it's going to become more active. Sorry, I need to just put my charger in. <laughs> my charger. All right, mate. All oh, right, mate. You've got to stay oh. on. Stay on. Yeah, I'm yeah. Finished, yeah. I Miss, and then we've got a cyber team department, which is covering everything online. Because as we know, Phil, ninety percent of grooming takes place online. So always, guys, check your kids' devices. It's the biggest, uh, biggest bit of information we can give you. Is ninety percent of grooming is done online. So check your kids' devices. Know who they're talking to, and sometimes it's not who they think. So just be a bit careful. Check your apps. Make sure that you don't have free roaming on there. Free roaming is these apps that, by default, have your location. And it could be something like Pokemon. It could be something like anything, you know, Roblox, or anything like that. They can find you and WhatsApp do it. So you need to make sure you're going into your kids' settings and turning this, uh, turning this little thing, this little function off so people can't look at their phone and find your child on their phone. And it is happening. We know it's happening. Rochdale's been busy for offenders over the last couple of weeks. Um, 
there's been a lot of incidents. There was a child nearly snatched in Aldi, caught on video, Phil. Um, he then went to a place from Bowley in Middleton and tried to grab another kid the day after, but was caught then. He's been charged. If you bear with me, I'll give you his name. Um, but this guy, this guy, Phil, picked this bet. I've got the video. It's there somewhere. Um, this guy picked this child up while his little brother was there with him. And his little brother, about eight year old, punched fuck out of him to put the child, he put his little brother down. And the guy gave him and put the kid down and disappeared. That's <laughs> what a brave young boy. And what, yeah, what a little hero. Um, Without I'm a trying doubt. to find out if I can get, do a little surprise for him or something, oh, get him the football. What? Man, that is so courageous, that. Eight, I'm eight. Just, I'm just going to find it for you, Phil, on my computer now. Okay. Yeah, go for it. I tell you what, though. People have got to understand. When you listen to this, Billy, you hear about this. It, to me, this is what's weird about this. We're not on another planet here. The thought that your child is unsafe on the streets is the ultimate fear for any family up and down the country, around the world. No one ever wants to be the one that gets the phone call that your daughter or your son has gone missing, has been grabbed. So when it, it's such a heinous thing to even consider on someone else's level, i.e. what would I feel like if it happened to me? I don't understand, Billy, how people are wired that kids are not tins of beans in Alder. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah they're definitely. shoplifting, and I can get people when they're desperate, they'll go and nick. What makes them think they can nick someone else's child and do what they please with them? I, I can't. On a level, this is, we're talking, well, that's paedophilia. You know, you're scratching into that now. On a psychological level, we're scratching into probably main, many things there. But that, sorry to go on, that I can't understand that. You want to nurture, you want to help somebody, you want to guide. You know, we all have moments where other people's kids will piss you off and all that kind of stuff, and they're a bit cheeky on the street. Well, if they were mine, I'd slap their ass. But seriously... On a level, to think of the depravity involved, I don't found me. I just I'm that. just I'm going to read this Manchester Evening News article here about this guy, if you don't mind, Phil. A 60-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of kidnap after attempted abduction in Haywood. On Saturday, the 23rd of July, police received an initial report of an attempted abduction of a child at around 5.45 at Bradshaw Street, Airwood. Immediate investigation with CCTV from the premises has been reviewed. A 60-year-old man subsequently arrested on suspicion of kidnap. We would like to thank members of the public for the response to the incident. Not to mention the little boy who was a little hero. They should be putting him on national TV saying, look at this hero. <laughs> you know what I mean? Definitely, but, if he's caught on CCTV, but uh, just at least he should be mentioned that he played a part in it. So, did, I'm sorry, mate, did I miss that? Did they name that guy? I'm still trying to find it. it. It's messing me about a minute. I've just gone to, to In Your Area, and it's something that Manchester Evening News has brought. Oh. Right, Give me a well, few seconds, Bill, and I'll find it. Yet. Take your time. Take your time. Right, well, while you're looking for that, there's something else I wanted to bring up. Uh, let me get to this. In terms of PAG, right, we've got... Sorry, I've not even gone to comments, you know. I'm just... So, sorry, guys. Just gone right in here. Right in for the kill. I've got loads of screenshots here of what I kind of shared with Billy at one point. But let me just quickly go in. Yes, we've got the wizard. Ah, Rob. Yes, Rob. Thank you for joining us, mate. Our good man, our good patriot from the Isle of Man, is here. Uh, we've got Emma. Why, I'm not is the Emma. Why is this allowed to go on? Because I don't believe the racist narrative we're told. You know, it's the same thing, isn't it? It's uh, Emily, Emma has just said what I feel there. Yeah. The, the racist narrative is 
So sorry to say this, Emma, and I'm sure you didn't say it, but I'm going to say it. It's bullshit, and it smells like bullshit. It looks like bullshit. And unfortunately, I'm sure it tastes like bullshit, but I'll never go there in order to say that and confirm it. But with every other measure and meter, and you know, the way you decipher it, it stinks. Even to the average person now, because that as a template, Billy, has been utilised yeah. on pretty much every time you've argued against something establishment-based. you understand what I mean? So well, with abuse, you get this, you get the racist card. You know, the strangest thing was, mate, when I was covering freedom marches when the lockdown, and I had my views and I got my channel shut down because I told truths. But I was going out on marches, and marches where I could have been arrested, I could have had my property seized and charged heavily because we were so tightened, yeah? These marches were all the same thing. The people were deemed far-right and racist. It was always a far-right yeah. agenda. And when I seen that as a correlation, I thought, you've exposed yourself for pumping bullshit. Because now yeah. you're carbon copying the racist far right argument with every time someone moans about what you're doing. And it made sense on certain issues because there's colour. But when you're talking about freedom, it had absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with it. So to pull that stunt, you exposed yourself, which we yeah. kind of do anyway. So I think that narrative is broke down with most of the psyche now, most of people's psyche, because most people will have conversations and they'll go, well, you know, because I went to a freedom march, they called me far right and they deleted my channel. And they'll go, fuck off. I go, yeah, they did. And it's just as crazy as when I got called a Nazi, but at least I can understand that one because there was a colour element involved, a race element or a, a religion element, not a race as such. So yeah. I can understand why that would stick to that, you know? So you've got to walk tall, haven't you, Billy? You've got to mean uh, what yeah. you say, say what you mean. It used to upset me early in early days, being called far right. I've got you know I've got three uncles that aren't white guys. You know what I'm saying? It used to make me upset. You know, thinking, no, I'm not a racist. You know what I mean? But a paedophile's a paedophile. I go after them all. Doesn't matter who they are. Doesn't matter. None of them scare me. I go after every single one of them. Um, so I ain't no I ain't no racist. But then I started thinking, what I'm caught. What? Why am I worrying about what other people are saying? I know, the survivors I work with know that I'm straight down the middle for them. Do you know what I mean? I won't do anything unless it's right for them. So if that makes me what a racist, then so be it. I'll no, walk with my head all down. It's the hypocrisy out of it all, mate. It, the woman that called me uh, a Nazi, oh, she didn't actually call me a Nazi. She said, uh, well, what is it? I remember, the video. I remember the video. I remember the video. And she goes, uh, well, you must be, yeah, that was it, you must be if you follow them. And it was funny the way she said it and everything. I thought, well, you, you kind of disregarded a lot of people within that. And then shortly after that, she said to me, which is I think is even worse, you're a traitor to your own soul. Anyone can watch hmm. the clip. She said it clearly. It's not, not hiding anywhere. And I think that is the worst hypocritical slap you're trying to say all these people are racist there, but because I express a point of view that you didn't agree with, you didn't even have the common sense to kind of leave the colour thing out of there. You actually yeah. said you're a traitor to your own soul. So if their own soul denotes colour, then why have you got an issue with everyone else? It didn't make sense all the way round. And I thought, man... She this like is... said, she exposed herself saying that shit, didn't she? <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course. Of course, pal. But we, we see it all. You know, we see it all with us, um, with what we've followed. Sorry, mate, I'm just going to... While I'm... I want to talk pag base for a minute because what I want to do here is thank people who, in the background, have sent me links, uh, have sent me and spoke to me about different things over the past couple of days. Uh, still not sifted through all of it yet. There's a lot, a lot of background with Oldham and 
there is with Rochdale. But I have done a little bit of homework with you, Billy, over the years with Rochdale. Yeah. So at least I'm somewhat old fake. Oldham, I knew it was on the map, but I never covered it. And I'm like, man, when you start to learn about the characters, when you start to learn about the political system and all the people yeah. and what's going on, and for years you start to build a pattern. I don't know enough in Oldham uh, about Oldham to start saying I'm the man about Oldham. No, I'm just helping people that know more about me, uh, about Oldham. Yeah. But one thing I will say, going back to Rochdale, mate, this post... Sorry, you put someone's on. banking at my door, Phil. Just give me one sec, sorry, buddy. Go for it, pal. Go for it. I'll cover it. Right. Let's hope it's nothing sinister. Let's hope. Let's hope it's post-cold lottery. And he's won a shitload of money. Do you reckon? Do you reckon he's just become a multi-millionaire? Two knocks at the door. I reckon he's a millionaire now and all our problems are going to be solved. He's a multi-millionaire. Someone from People's Lottery has come with a fucking cheque as long as a car because it's got that many zeros on it with the name Billy Howarth. This is for you. Let's see, shall we? Bill, what's that? Billy, are you, are you a millionaire or what, mate? Just answer me that question. I'm fucking skimp, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I was thinking the knock on the door would have been the people's lottery with a big fat check going, here, yeah, Billy. No, it was, it was a window cleaner. I owed him a tenner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's always the fucking way with us working class, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> you try and get a leg up, you just... The run just breaks like bags a lot, guys. No, what this <laughs> that was funny. What this post is about, I got it sent of someone who clearly follows you. You may even know them. I don't want to expose them. Um, but this goes goes back a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you Denise Tindall and her son Sean Duffy, two parish councillors from Sean o Sean Oldham. We set up a yeah. meet when investigating a case. And the area that the meeting declared they wanted to join the team. So now I want you to tell us who these guys are, how you knew of them, and then the fact what it looks like they've tried to join PAG. Yes. So, sure, all of them, it's run by a parish council. Okay. Right. So I was approached by on Facebook by Sean Duffy. Am I right saying that name? Yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't, yeah. Right, so... Yes, Sean I, Duffy. I know he's Tindall. I didn't agree with Sean Tindall, but it's Sean Duffy, isn't it? Right, so them two approached me and I had a meeting with them at Kingsway and McDonald's, Rochdale. And what they didn't know was my friend and some people who I knew had stung a rubber son in the daytime. Right. A, a couple of weeks prior to this meeting. So... And that's him. I went, left, I went to meet him. I went to meet him, found out what they had to say, and then I left. And I, I, I never, right. used, and I thought, do you know what? I, I already know what your game is. So, I, like I said, there's the post. Um, that's what came out of it. Um, after that, lots more accusations come through about the pair, um, but they got bounced. Um, sure, didn't re-elect them. Let's just say that. Um, Try to infiltrate. Well, well that, that's what I was trying to get at, mate. The, what ultimate reasons? It, is it going to be for safeguarding? Is it going to actually be to help pack? I mean, what's the allegations so, of this guy? To discredit a group like mine for catching the sun like us. Look, we work with this group. Or, you know, we, we're not these yeah. type of people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's what I thought her uh, uh, thing was. Well, um, let's be honest then, Billy. What's the what's the percentage percentage of him actually joining you your group as a volunteer for the betterment of Oldham or Rochdale? Uh, zero, zero. We was on, I was on to him. Possibility out there. We're not saying we're not going gun ho here. I mean, people have yeah. got to look at that with what he's been charged with and what. You know, people got to look at the bigger picture. I was already pretty warned by some of his some of his previous employers on what a kind of person he was. Um, big fibber, but we had his, we had his number, man. I had his number from. I've got that spidey feeling, Phil, from a survivor. 
you know the kind of person, Phil. And I sat down with him um, and I got a bad vibe from him. So I kind of knew what I was thinking already was right. So and it turns he, out I was spot was, on, he, weren't I? He was, well, clearly. He was literally trying to join. He was saying all the things in actual to become members and do what? what him what and his mum. Her as what? well. She, what did they have in mind? What what did they see their role was? Um, we got political clout. There was no, elected. There was elected at the time. We've got political clout, so I took it away from them. I said, well, "No, you haven't." <laughs> how can that work when she knows what her son's up to? Because didn't every... speak. when I met them, some wasn't even mentioned. They no, thought that I knew, I knew nothing about the third. So she's got two sons, like the one on the right, which is councillor Sean up here, the one on the left, Peter Simpson. I can't yeah. see it for the right. Is that his name? Yes. Uh, Peter Simpson is on the other page, I do believe, mate. I don't, I'm not sure whether it's said. It might that's be. his name. Yeah, yeah, that's his name. I no longer can look back at these, Phil, because Facebook have removed my account, haven't they? So believe. So believe, mate. I can't look back at these posts that, I used, many, that I've done in the past. How many people so, did you have following you on that page? I'd say over 20,000. And what's been happening? What type of things? What? Because I know you've been sending me screenshots of certain things that have gone. No, on. I will. I'll, I'll be honest, Phil. No holes barred. I'm not. I'm not lying. Um, I posted everything that I've been. I'm not, everything I can back up. I posted from Gordon Brown to <laughs> Peter Farhey to Tony Lloyd. I've called them all out, mate. I've, I've put their evidence online. Have you been warned for doing it? Have you had any bans? No, I've had a couple of I've had a couple of little thirty day bans here and there, but that's more 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 than arguing with United fans fill than any of the work based stuff. But this, this were I got quite a few through the COVID nonsense. Right. A few bans to do that. But um why's my phone keep keeps oh, yeah, mate. I don't um, know. Right. Before you go, mate, uh Debbie. Debbie is currently, I think, doing an interview with GB News. Um, but particularly, is it this one? <clears throat> the letter, mate. The letter that Debbie and other people, or someone you know, because you sent me a copy of a letter yeah. from Oldham, um, the Oldham Council. They saw these people out who were at the meeting. Now, with Debbie, there must have been a breach of data because Debbie... It, Let's say this, Debbie's address shouldn't be known to Oldham Council. Is that fair to say, no. Phil? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm fuming over this one. Um, I'm fuming the VAS board, these people, these four people, because I was in both meetings and I never heard none of that rhetoric. Um, no, no, no. What they've stated has been saying, that, and I've looked through all the videos, yours, Janaeus, everybody's, including me own, and I have not seen anyone... Repeat them words. So I know that's a, that's a lie. Secondly, Oldham Council are, should not have Deborah's address. It's as simple as that. We won't go into reasons why, but they should not have or even be told. So there has been a severe database, uh, database breach there. Serious. Um, and because of things said in the past, it's quite dangerous too. This but is no, where the I'm worried about the foot, though, again, isn't it? Because look at the yeah. momentum it's gained. She's now talking about her story. Um, it, it's crazy. I think that meeting has resonated. That meeting on the 27th, um, particularly the one I went to as well on the 13th. Um, one thing I have noticed, Billy, uh, my footage is being shown by these news outlets. Yes, yes, my friend Patrick. Right, well, cool. Uh, it's not. It's <laughs> just because I made an observation. It's on a, a Twitter, um, other news as well on Twitter, um, talking about the actual uh, old and what's going on. Um, 
what do you think of this? And we'll go back to Finally, the um, it's been going on in all the other places that we've been reporting on this channel regularly for you, uh, you guys. First, we had um, the actual chamber, Olden Council, when residents and uh, victims and families of victims went to um, ask questions from uh, the local authorities, councillors, uh, Andy Burnham and many others. And they, they didn't really get an answer. Uh, the police afterwards came and gave them warning and gave them ASBO uh, because they were, they were antisocial behavior issues that they had to deal with. So the police basically shut them down and nobody heard their voices properly. But we reported it and some other newspapers reported it as well. And the issue has been escalated. Finally, finally, Boris Johnson and his government are going to be intervening. They're going to be forcing the Oldham Council to... Well, no, they're not going to actually get the council to do it. They're going to get the national government, Westminster, to launch an inquiry into Oldham. Because the whole point of that council meeting was uh, people were uh, demanding an inquiry. And the Oldham council decided to vote against it. They rejected the idea. The Boris Johnson government have finally come out to say, um, well, we're going to do it on your behalf. The problem I still have is that national governments, they have done these inquiries before. Where does it get to? Do you think it up, Ella? Yeah, I've watched it already, yeah. He's not wrong, is he? I mean, what were they saying today on the mainstream news? Um, we're at a, a president where it's autocracy, autoc I can't say it, or democracy, autocracy, yeah. democracy. Autocracy. Uh, yeah, autocracy yeah. means being so, led like... Um, well, look what's happening. <laughs> and this is the, the beautiful thing, if, uh, even though it's a horrible subject, I do feel a widening of that door, Billy. I do feel yeah. people are starting to feel less that it's uncomfortable to talk about this, feel less to know that it's actually going on. I don't think it's quite on loose women yet where they can sit and correlate all these things. I'm not sure of that. Sorry, mate. It has been loose women. It has been with Maggie Oliver and Sarah Ray Botham back early, early doors. Maggie on again, not so long ago. So right. It has been. Well, mate, we've got to do this more and more. Uh, I don't yeah. want to bring the world down, but until we learn that this is happening in society and keep reminding, you know, keeping these people to account all the time, look how laps it's got in every area now, Billy. They're getting away yeah. with it. Yeah. There's people now, actively, not just in Rochdale now, but I know other people who are patrolling parks are putting cameras on the roads, pointing them at ginnels, you know, pathways, oh. alleyways. To, you know, they're not just putting them on the roads, they're putting them in areas they know deem unsafe. So we're going to watch that area in case anything happens. So it's, um, it's a community responsibility. Um, you might not have kids yourself, yeah, your kids might be growing up and left home and you think, well, it's not going to happen to mine. But then your kid, you're going to return with grandkids and then they're the target. So we've got to all, each and every one of us, do that little bit more. Keep your eyes open and wait, look, know what you're looking for, yeah? I do think, again, mate, as much as you're totally right, it's just as much people's problem. You know, we, we could do more, we could. But there's so many reasons why things have changed and it's not just on that element and this way it stems to the government again like a, some kind of weird fucked up social engineering program that's just constantly being put out on people and people have took it because life becomes easier and simple but look at the state of us <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. when people stop caring about each other on the street and people become more take take from people We've seen it with toilet rolls. We've seen it with hand sanitizer. The worst of situations. We see it with Black Friday. We all want digital, but then we see it when the actual digital cards run out in America. That what the chaos that caused. We know we always get led up a garden path, and I don't even know what I'm saying here. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that these governments, they should take more of a responsibility Billy, like you just said there with the people, I get it and it's right, we've all got to look at this and take responsibility but if the government truly don't want to talk about the extent of this and why this is happening and the failings and you know what we have got people in our police force we have got people in our judiciary that do this dirty nasty stuff then 
I don't know. I do. It's just accountability, mate. It's not going far enough. You know, um, if what they say, does this correlate with what was going on earlier today when there was an unconfirmed report coming out about an inquiry into Oldham? Do you reckon so this was? Here's my thought process on this, Phil, right? Yes. Four weeks ago, I was at meeting number one. Right. Um, where it said, Oldham, yeah, yes, failings were made, but there was no cover up. They spoke to one person. Three weeks later, the next meeting takes place where they restate what they've said in the previous meeting. There was no cover up by the council. We did everything in our power possible to make sure it's safe. We know they didn't. And today, now they're executing warrants from two, year 2000. So, A, why to what took so long? If you had this information all the time and now you're only just acting on it, because this wasn't last week this young lady went forward or other ladies went forward. Well, last month, it was a long time ago these, these girls came forward. So what's took so long? So therefore, if they've known about this for so long and not acted on it, that's the definition of cover-up. For me, that's the definition of cover-up. And the second thing, if I can remember what it is, because my head's just gone blank. Um, no, well, I, I think you're right. I think, personally, they were forced into it, really. yeah. I mean, it's nice that it's come out. It's nice that they've done this. But let's face it, if it's took so long, this was one of the implementations that Amanda, uh, the leader of Labour in Oldham, Labour Council Oldham, um, she run out this plan of all these different ways of attacking it. And this was kind of mentioned, wasn't it? We were sat there at the time. Now, you actually said the same as me. Something's happening, something's moving because they're doing this. But by very definition, it shows that the failings must have been bad because they've only reacted for this only because of that review. Here's my point B. I've got it. Point B is that review spoke to one survivor. Right. They've said they've made five arrests today on warrants. So either we're looking at something really, really horrific, Phil, or there's more children involved and they haven't spoke to them children with this review. Therefore, the review doesn't stand up. It's misinformed. They've not got all the facts or information. Therefore, another inquiry is needed because of these arrests alone. Now, you, you go in that many years later, mate, you're going to lose so much anyway. It's like shutting the door after the horse has bolted, isn't it? Say to you, now they've done this, they're thinking, well, that'll keep them all happy. Of course. I know. In fact, I know exactly. we now know, we now know by fact they have more information than what the review let on because now yeah. they're acting on it. How can it be enough when the people of Oldham not, don't know the whole story? Coming out with, uh, I noticed because the person who sent me this sent an earlier article which stated that there was going to be warrants set out, put out, because of this task force set up. And they were trying to big him up like da, 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 da. But like you say, you read between the lines, you, you understand it. Yeah. When I tried to click Another on it thing. the following day, one second, Billy, when I tried to click on it the following day, this was the only article that was coming up. So it was like, this had to be thrown out because on a psychological level, hey, guys, look, we're doing what we say. Look, three men arrested. Doesn't that look good? But, you know, that doesn't touch the side. One of the things that one of the older residents was saying, how many people were affected? You no. can't even answer that question when it comes to grooming and a specific period. So what does that tell you? If you're going to just present three people, does that, what? Seriously? Does that cover what's going on? So what they're, in, in effect, Phil, from, the, from, from that review, right, what they're trying to say is, they only had one person in Oldham who's been affected by child sexual exploitation. Only one yeah. person. Yeah, well. Do you know what I'm saying? That, and that the was excuses you made. 
in order not to speak to Sam, not a uh, soul thing. Of course. You but know, she was I the only one this spoke to. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've only just come to learn this, mate. I've no, you know, I don't know the deeper story, but she's been wrong from the looks of it. And the way they dodged, they actually said at one point they were doing it for her safeguarding. Yeah. She, they they facilitated it. That day after the police station, which we won't go into, I'm telling you now, the, the actions of the Great Manchester Police on that day facilitated that poor girl's abuse. And that's strong words. I don't like saying them on live videos. It's just like, you know, but I, I know I'm right with this one. Their lack of action. This It's not like we work for selling cars and you don't sell a car, so your boss is going to be mad. It's not a case of that. It's The effects of doing this is a child's going to be abused. If you don't do what you're supposed to do in your profession and you know that's your job and on the back of that job, if you don't do it correctly, a child will be abused. You've got to do that fucking job, Spawn. And it's what true. we're seeing in the UK, we've been seeing for almost probably longer. I mean, I'm, I'm 45 now. For the last 45 years that I know about, last 25 years where it's been something that stuck in my head, um, Something's really wrong with our system and it needs to either ripping up, throwing in the bin. We need top-down reform on children's services. The book that all these social workers work from needs throwing in the bin. The police need... We need accountability. Mm -hmm. Widespread, right across the board, from government to councils to social workers to school teachers if need be, because some of them aren't pulling the weight. Do you know what I'm saying? They're not, they may be doing now, that may be some of that doesn't happen anymore, Phil, but I remember back in the 90s, these guys were turning up to schools and picking these girls up outside school and teachers were aware of it, but did nothing. Yeah, didn't report it. That's just the only. Yeah, she's wilder anyway, you know. Well, Let it go. I mean, how many times? Put it on the lifestyle. You know, put it on the parents. Lifestyle. You know what I mean? You know, so... Never mind the abuse, you just let it slide. But I agree with you, Billy. This is going to taste very, very bitter before any sweetness is going to come, if any. But we'll be having a conversation five years' yeah. time. We'll be talking again, and it'll be about Barrow next time and all the revelations in Barrow, and we'll be talking about how they covered it up. Just let me do, just remember this point, because that's another fight that ain't going away. We ain't going away. COVID slowed us down, but... We're ready to go again. The PAG UK Cumbria team are smashing it. Justice for Ellis, both of them. What's going on there? Yeah, for, and for, for them all. For them all. Yeah, there's many survivors, you know, and it's got to be said. Um, I will be inviting Ian on. We're, we're all going to be on talking about it, like I say, mate, because that's a story I want to get out more and more. I've covered it briefly with yourself. We've done a couple of little bits down there over the years. But you know, let's talk about it. Let's talk about right. the NRM. What does that constitute when someone gets a, a national referral mechanism? I think it ties into what uh, actually we're discussing, Phil, and I need to cover it if you don't mind, is the acquisition of Cumbria's Sarah Jackson. Yeah. Right. So when I first went to Barrow, I, I was approached by, uh, what do you call them, you know, Community support officer, liaison officer. We was having a protest in Barrow, and it was a community liaison officer called Howie who came over to me and he said to me, Billy, would you mind meeting with the gaffers? And I went, one condition, families come with me. I won't meet without them. I won't meet anyone unless Ian, blah, blah, blah. I won't name the other people because I don't have their permission. I know Ian won't mind um, the other people present at this meeting. Um, so we went to the meeting, and present at this meeting was the people who I've mentioned, Ian Piper. Also meeting was Detective Inspector John Graham Cummings. I don't know the full rank and title, but there was Gail... Oh, come on, Billy. Gaynor Wardle, who was the head of Barrow Police. And then there was Sarah Jackson, who was, like, chief second in command to Dean Holden. Dean Holden wasn't present at this meeting. And at this meeting, there was a lot of things that we had to discuss, which we can't talk about now. Um, 
but everything I threw at them, she batted back. So we got to the NRM, which is a national unit. National so, referral mechanism. Sorry, it mate. Was I commissioned I by the Home Office. Yes. Um, to to support your, you know, saying that you are a victim of trafficking and, and so on. She said to, and I couldn't believe the words she came out of her mouth. She said that that isn't with a statement enough evidence to look into these cases. Now, bear in mind, there wasn't just one family in this meeting. There was three. There was meant to be four, but one had come earlier for an earlier meeting and left. So there was three families in this meeting plus myself. And she said, those three statements from them three people, along with one NRM, wasn't enough for it to be investigated. And that came from the person who's been now selected to cover CSE, in Great, to cover the whole of Greater Manchester. Optimistic? Absolutely not. Devastated? Completely. Going to put up with it? Absolutely no chance. Um, but the beauty is, you can hold her to the coals, can't you? Yes. You know um, I mean? That's the one thing I did notice with Olden, mate. Everyone in there was that politically astute that when they were saying things, it wasn't just being unintelligent and just throwing stupid statements out. They knew exactly. They could yeah. tell me, well, you know what happened with him two years ago, da, 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 da. and they were reeling off. And I'm like, what? Just sitting there with his textbook of yeah. shenanigans that all these different individuals have done. So people are politically savvy there, and they know the leaders have been let down. I mean, we can go back to the last two leaders um, who have been um, voted out by all of them because of this. Um, the first time Deb, Debbie went in, uh, she was attacked by being called uh, far right and a bigger and so on, so on, so on, to the point where the police come in and try to remove her from the council meeting. She was called a bare-faced liar. Where's her letter of apology? Where's the other people who stood with her at the time? Where's their letter of apology? There was some of them severely victimised, bullied. Do you know what I'm saying? So in came the next leader, and she did exactly the same, but the last leader, so we got rid of her as well. I'll be honest with you, I don't see Amanda Chadderton seeing it past me. <laughs> because all of them are a tough breed, and they, won't, they don't swallow bullshit. They've been spoiled, though. So don't forget Winston Churchill with their guy. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they know what they want over there. Yeah, yeah, and so we should, but it was nice to see, mate. It was nice to see. Uh, it made me proud that. Down, I mean, what? The, let's put it this way. Let's end it on here, mate, because I'll let you get going, honestly. But it's been brilliant having you on. They've upped the security at Oldham, haven't they? I know they ducked it with the doors um, and with the perspex and whatnot, but haven't they reviewed the security again? This is what Debbie tells me. My mate, who was one of the security guards, I won't name him for a fear of reprisals, but he said that they brought, for the first meeting they drafted in nine security guards extra than what the normally is. For the second one, there were 13 security guards drafted in, and they'd built a, like a... So in the first one, you could get to the speaker's box on the floor. But the second one, they put doors and panels up around the building so you couldn't get it on the floor. You couldn't get your point across. Therefore... You could hardly hear what they were saying, if I'm honest. Do you know, on the other side of the perspex screen, so obviously when people are here, yeah, some did bang the windows, did bang the boards, but that's the only truth in them in them ASBO letters, that a few people banged the boards to try and get the attention of people speaking. You know, I think what they've tried to do is backfired massively, mate. I, I people people aren't buying it anymore. No one's buying it no, anymore. We can, well, the evidence is there. Uh, that was there, the sentiment that was being projected and must have been even worse on the 27th, must have been. But that footage shows on the public side what the feeling was. And it wasn't irrational, it wasn't irrelevant, it wasn't people that were intoxicated, it was people who had valid reasons to be like that. It's an emotional contentious subject but the bottom line is there's been that many failings this government this council is not sufficient it's not fit for purpose really that's the thing 
They're trying to just paper over the cracks, but these people were letting him know you're not fit for purpose because you're not owning the situation when they can see everything else going on. When they can see that the, one of the leaders of Rochdale Gang, or was it Oldham, sorry, actually works as a welfare officer. Yeah, but that, that, that's something I've been shouting that for years, mate. I've known this for years, but, you know, it just gets lost in transition when you're saying it so many it times. Be. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> it was funny because um, Debbie showed me a letter, and I can't talk about it now, but we're, I'm going to break down certain correspondence. I'd love to have you here one time. I don't think I've got it in here. Um, <clears throat> a, a, a letter where the BBC was suppressed by all yeah. the council. BBC so, Manchester. Yeah, and this was 2013. But then I've already received letters which are leaked. One of them an email and one of them is a written statement. But they're, they're itemising where there's people talking about bars that have been set up. But then these bars are not outwardly seen as bars um, because they've got maybe blacked out windows or whatever. She should out. Yes. And it turns out these are official people writing out concerns on a safeguarding level. We'd love to break the letter down, but it explains yeah. it then. And this then, what you said before about online, Billy, the, this is exclusively done online and it needs to know, wink, wink, and only certain people can get to go in. Yeah. And that... I don't know how pre prevalent it was, but it's enough to raise concerns. So the people knew within it, and people was trying to scream from it. I mean, let, let's say that, Billy. There's many people, because we've got these links, because we've got this bit of information, we have got to admit there was must have been many people uh, that were trying, just like Martin, Martin Deegan, just like him, trying to work, done it, seen it, tried to scream about it and was castigated. And it pretty much ruined their life because they'd done it. So it Yeah, they did. They did. MI5 chased them both down in Manlander. MI5 sat outside a house shining headlights through window, like midnight fruit bedroom window, Phil, honestly. She she woke up and, and she didn't scare easily, Linda, but that, that frightened her. That frightened her. She doesn't scare easy, but that frightened her. Well, the thought of it, innit? But these are the tactics. This is how serious it is, but they've got to do the right thing. You think, you know, things like this, oh, no, no. Am I five watching a 60 plus year old lady? Behave yourself. Uh, but, you know, I've seen oh. the levels. I've seen the levels. I've been with yeah. an old view lad. I went to with an old view lad to Rochdale Probation, Phil, right? And it's. I'm glad we we're back in touch because I want you to get. I've got two lads here for you that I want you to tell the story with because it needs to be. Um, but these lads, right? So one of them, I'm not going to name them yet, but you will get to speak to him. He asked it because he was PPI'd, coming out of no view into mainstream school, into prison, into young offenders, into jail and all so on throughout his life. That's what the torment did to him. That was how he acted out. He's torment what happened to him at Norview. The I was sat in a probation meeting with him, put long story short for be here all night with these books up. He asked for his paperwork, which he had given his probation officer to take care of because of damp in his in his place of board. Yeah? So his probation officers took these paperwork and said, yeah, we'll look after him. He's gone back. While I'm there in the room with him, he asked for his paperwork to be returned. The lady, the probation officer, turned around to him and tells him, the Ministry of Justice have said you're not allowed them. So what's happened there? Has she declared them or is she alleging that someone found out about it? I mean, how can they find yeah, out? Yeah, they've issued... Uh, a, a blanket ban on him having this paperwork still to this day can't get the paperwork and now it's at a point where what paperwork <laughs> no. well this is it so how can he get justice now because half the battle's been won sorry I've got a crazy dog on my case here wants to say hello but Billy you know we could talk about this 
for ages. Uh, I'm so glad that we've got the chance to speak about this. Yeah. There's so much we need to break down. I mean, I started this stream by saying that the world seems to be kind of spinning, revolving quicker because there's more news, things are happening. And I'm not talking about the greater thing. I'm just talking about this one subject that I've been following yeah. now. It's, that, well, that's... I'm seeing a bit of movement across the board. Good. But well, it's like people have had enough now. At first, it was like it was all about, well, you know, Matt, we're all right, but we're not getting involved. A bit controversial, a bit political. Uh, you no, know, might get called racist, you know, stuff like this. Now people are saying, well, I don't give a shit what they call me. This is prevalent. This is happening too many times, you know what I mean? Because we're proving it by keep going on and keep talking about these incidents that are happening. Especially in Rochdale, there's been many over the last six months. I could say there's been about eight incidents that have been reported and that have been not just by me, but by the local media as well. Yeah, so like a few snatches, uh, a few sex assaults, so on, rape, so on. It's all happening. Three police officers in two weeks from Greater Manchester Police stationed in Rochdale for offences. One was for, done for rape and the other one was done for stalking and one was done for online grooming. This brings on a bigger question, mate, because I, I've got a PDF file there I want to break down. It's very, very comprehensive. It shows over a certain period prison officers, police, and it breaks down the different uh, regions and uh, what they were charged with, if they were charged, and what may have happened to them. And then it moves over to another section, which is source, which is the actual art article. So these, the convicted, it's not like you're making allegations and spreading lies about people. These are actually convictions. And when you look at the file, make it makes your eyes water just how much. And you've just highlighted it there. So I was saying in an earlier post that I would love to do that, run through this file, and I'd love you to be there as well. Luckily, well, you can break, I, I, break that. Yeah, you know, we can run through the different police forces and go, right, I was particularly thinking of GMP just right now, and there's a few there in your face. I'll, I'll send you the file through WhatsApp, and you can just have a I've look. A video. I've got a video there, right? There was an accusation on a estate in Rochdale, and... The lady reported a paedophile across the road. He's not actually offended against her, but she wanted rid of him away. She, because of who she was, and we'll go into it in further detail, but I'm not going to name her now, but because of who she was, the police went straight to her house. Yeah? I've got the video of the copper saying, well, 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 she's mentioned PAG UK and the work PAG UK do, and he's gone, well, this is why we, we won't do... The crime, when, when PAG UK are involved, we won't get involved because detrimental to the case. And, I've, and she recorded it. She recorded it. I've got it on recorded, so I reported it. I reported right. it. Because I went, oh, well, that's not on, is it? So I reported it. And because it's not that great of audio, the, they won't pick it up. They won't say, oh, they just left it there. There'll be no further action from the inspector at Rochdale. Um, but when I find someone who can get that sound sorted, I've still got the video, I'll keep it forever. But as soon as I can find someone who can get that sound proper, I'm going back with it. Certainly. I'll send it to you. I'll send it so you can have a listen. You have to put headset on to hear it all. This is the attitude, isn't it, mate? So if you're telling everyone that this is how you view these people, then people ultimately start to think that. Hence, on a broader level, why everyone believes if you're looking or thinking about this, you've got severe right-wing issues and you're an extremist. You know what I mean? Mud sticks. If you can convince the people that what PAG UK are doing, you're being vigilantes and you're you know, attached, attached to racism or links to racist groups and all this kind of crap that you see in articles, people will be intimidated and scared off. They'll ultimately be sat in their living rooms thinking about grooming and believe it, but they won't utter it to that external force. They'll be scared of even mentioning it to their friends because of how it's deemed talking about it. And this is what yeah. makes it a taboo subject, and this is what makes more survivors. Correct, correct, correct. So remember Dan saying to me once, we need to, between us, and everybody who we roll with, um, one of their main aims has to be getting families and people talking about this around the dinner table like it's normal, talking about it, because that will be the education which is key to ending it uh, and at least diluting a lot of numbers. Do you know what I mean? So Yeah, I do. I'll tell you one story, mate, and then I'm going to let you get off. Thank you for jumping uh, on. 
I'm enjoying it, Phil. Fan. I have, mate, and we could go on and on. I could rattle on here for another two or three hours. I've got a couple of more images. I could dig up videos. Could really go mm. on. Um, but you know, I've uh, got the wife. You've got you know, <laughs> this is what I then get on. But I do want to jump back on at the weekend as well. <laughs> Not making it a taboo subject and taking it round the coffee table. I went to a friend's house, uh, a very intelligent guy, big guy, uh, younger than me. I'm 52, he is younger than me, but probably f- touching 40 or in his 40s. Family man, responsible, got a job, all that. Ticks all the boxes, he's sound, charismatic, got a good personality. I was talking about a documentary that I'd seen called Conspiracy of Silence. I'll never forget this, which entailed a documentary that Yorkshire TV had filmed in America, but even they didn't realise how big it went because they soon ended up from a little place in America to then going to Washington and undercovering a traffic ring within Washington, within the political ring. So even they were blown away. The irony is... just before this Yorkshire TV documentary was due to be aired in England, it got taken down, right? Got bought out by the people in America who financed them initially, blah, 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 blah. They pay all their expenses. I'll never forget the story. So the, this it was in the mid-80s. And you look at this documentary, it all stems about something like Boys Sound Club or George Sound Club or something. And there was serious questions that was going on emanating around one individual within it. So I'm, I was captivated and talking about this with my friend in his back garden while we're having a sick, right? We're all adults, grown adults, Billy. We can talk about this and not be really impacted and just roll on because we know it's serious. So I'm talking to you here. You're not freaking out in any way. I mentioned to him, you know, just like you talk about any other programme. Oh, did you watch this the other night? Yeah, 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 you want to watch it? It was just like that. And I was explaining about how they've got tunnels underneath schools, how they have jet airplanes and how these now service the elites because kids have gone missing through this, hence this documentary being filmed. It freaked him out that much, mate. Instantly, not almost instantly, but instantly he turned around because his friend was there and said to his friend, who are your five top superheroes, right? Now we're talking Spider-Man, Batman, all the usual bullshit. That's how quickly he jumped away from a response to what I was talking about. He turned from an adult to an unintelligent little child that couldn't comprehend he actually said to me, I can't listen to this. The, 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 the. Now, what I'm saying to you is, Billy, that is the problem when people shun this. This guy's got kids. Mm-hmm. What, yeah. is if, what if one of his kids were being groomed? You try, well, you're going to watch. It's all them, Phil. It's happened, mate. Beauty. I, I've had arguments with people on Facebook and in town about what I'm doing, and they're saying, you're just, you're just political, you're just political. A month later, they've rang me up, Billy, Billy. I've gone, I'm on my way. Do you know what I mean? I'm on my way. Regardless, I'm, saying I'm, this. My way. I'm not saying this because of you want to hate a certain section of society. Oh, because this crime cool. is actually transpiring. Oh, sir. Hey, oh. oh, is his power going? Oh, do, 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 do. oh no, his power. Oh, back to comments. Let's see a little bit of that. BJ getting involved. Uh, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't abbreviate it like that, Rob. I certainly would. <laughs> I would use his correct name. <laughs> Just not to give out the wrong signal there, Rob. My God. Can I ask, what does he think re BJ getting involved? What do you mean by that, Rob? If I wanted to be pedantic, Rob, I could really make mincemeat out of that. Seriously. The letters BJ, could you be a bit more specific, Rob? <laughs> Ooh. No offence. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy. Sorry, it's me. It's me. I've got my mind in the gutter. I can't help myself. Oh, oh, Billy's gone. Billy's gone. Right, I guess that's it. Look at that. That was abrupt, wasn't it? My God. 
I, I'm getting dark. I'll turn on my, my, my light now. It's like he fell off a cliff or something. That was a bit eerie. Has he been possessed and just gone? Has the internet just sacked him up? I don't know what's going on. It was a wicked chat anyway. I was going to say yo to him. Listen, thanks to everyone for jumping on. Um, we've probably rambled on too long there about different subjects. I'll try and condense it, condense it down for uh, the Facebook channel uh, within a day or so. Give me... <laughs> Sorry, Rob. I'm not suggesting that you... I'm not suggesting any of that. I'm just saying, as a visual, aesthetically, Rob, maybe it's my twisted what mine, Rob, but I won't be the only one when you see it like that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Emma. Thank you, everyone, for jumping on. Have a... Don't answer the door, Phil. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I, I want me check. If Billy ain't got it, I'm getting it. You know what I mean? Seriously, I'm getting it. Oh, guys, it's been a blast. I've really enjoyed Billy's company, and hopefully it's been informative and insightful. Um, uh, There's going to be more. There's so much more to do on this, talk about this. I want to get Debbie more involved. Good luck. I hope she, it all went well there today. So, yes, guys, I'm going to get going. Love you and leave you. Um, you take care. I'll uh, let you know as soon as I know anything new in regards to anything that's going on, guys. So thank you very much. You take care. Love you all. Even the pissing haters. I love you all. 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 Even the pissing haters. I love you all. 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 I